We started giving commercial tours here 195 years ago, 1860. People coming through. It's just a local curiosity. The guides were local farm boys, maybe the owner's son or something like that. And so it just proceeds like that for 20 some years. Big change happens here in the year 1838. A man buys this cave named Frank Gorin. Gorin is born 20 miles away from here in Glasgow, Kentucky. He is reputed to be the first pioneer child born in South Central Kentucky. In 1838, he's 58 years old, so you do the math. He's an attorney, he's a state legislator, he's a big wheel. He buys this cave in 1838 for $5,000. That's big money, all right? And either by design or by accident, he has a stroke of genius. He brings a young man to the cave to work for him. This guy's name is Stephen Bishop. Stephen is a mixed race individual. His father is white, his mother is black. He is five foot six, he's strong, he's intelligent, he's adventuresome, he's the perfect cave explorer. So Stephen leads people through this cave. One more thing though, year 1838, in a southern state like Kentucky, you're either white or you're anything else. Stephen Bishop was a slave. So Gordon brings him here, and Stephen starts exploring. And before that, it was just go up and go back. But behind this rock here, there was a bunch of breakdown, and Stephen digs that out, opens it up, and discovers miles and miles of cave by himself. Big domes, big pits. The rest of our tour was, was seen originally by Stephen Bishop in late 1830s, early 1840s. Well, Mammoth Cave becomes real famous almost overnight. People want to see all these new formations that Stephen Bishop finds. Gorin sells the cave to a guy named Dr. John Cron 18 months later. 10,000 bucks in 1839. Doubles his money and gets out. Big money. On that particular day, Stephen Bishop is worth $600. A man in his prime was sold right here. 1839, 600 bucks. And Gorin's an interesting, I mean, uh, Cron's an interesting guy because he's connected. His uncle is George Rogers Clark, Revolutionary War general, big hero, the guy credited with founding the city of Louisville, Kentucky. Clark's brother is William Clark. Remember Lewis and Clark? That's Clark. So, big, well-known, connected family, and Cron has all kinds of money. So he builds a big hotel, he actually builds a highway that comes up here, and people start coming to Mammoth Cave big time. The early tour guides were slaves. After Stephen came, he was so successful that they, they buy slaves and bring them in here. If you took a tour between 1838 and the time he became a national park in 1941, odds are your guide would be a slave or after the Civil War, one of their descendants. There's a man working here today about five years older than I am, Jerry Bransford. He's a fifth generation descendant of a slave boy brought here in 1838. So, their tradition goes on. Those guys were master storytellers. You understand they were slaves. They weren't getting a wage, but they weren't stupid. They were allowed to take tips. So, if you wanted to give your guy a nickel or a dime, whatever, you could write your name on the wall. You could scratch it on the wall, like this gentleman did. J.N. McDowell, M.D., 1839. You could take some kind of a smoke device and smoke it on the wall like Kozad up there. You could use a candle, you could use lipstick, you could anything. Nothing erodes in the cave. And from now on, as we go down, we're going to go down this way in a minute. When the ceilings get lower and the walls come in, lots of surfaces you'll see writing all over the place. And it's almost all pre-Civil War. It's old. I mentioned to you back at the last stop that this was among, one of the most famous locations in Mammoth Cave. Get on Google Images and just type in Mammoth Cave. You'll see this big rock behind you. Can you see that? That is known as the giant's coffin. You see the coffin in the lake? Giant's coffin. And in the early days, the guides would take their lanterns and climb over these rocks, which I can't do, and lower the lantern and the shadow would look like the lid was coming up on the coffin. <laughs> Scare the wits out of their visitors. That was good for another tip to get him out of there. <laughs> now, I can't do it with this lantern, but I can cheat and use my flashlight. So, what I'm going to ask you to do is look at the wall behind the giant's coffin and see if you can see that lid coming up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be something?
should they buy land from white? <laughs> now, we're going to push on in a minute, but before we do that, I want to show you what Mammoth Cave looks like when we're not here. We're going to turn the lights out on you. So, grab on to somebody you know or somebody you'd like to know. <laughs> Couple things I need to ask you, please. First of all, if you have a camera or a cell phone or anything with light, power that down, put it in your pocket, put it somewhere. Even the smallest little light is going to show up. Once this light goes out, no screaming. 